Hey, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there. Wayne Fox back with another video. This one is in my digitizing memory series. Uh, recently, I did a video about the Elgato video capture device, how we can take these old analog videotapes and digitize those. Pretty nice device considering it's USB and it's pretty reasonably priced and it does a decent job. And check that video out. I'll link it up there if you haven't seen it. Now, there are lots of ways to do this. And I don't think, I'm not saying my way is right. Uh, probably ways you might get a little bit better quality, but I've always felt, you know, not, not a lot of quality in these old videotapes. And what I'm getting to watch on my TV looks great. But the challenge is, is when you vi uh, digitize a, a tape like this, you got two hours worth of video on that. And what we would do back then is we would shoot five, 10 minutes of video of an event, then we get the camera back out. And so, first of all, the videos are just kind of based around events in life. Unlike now, where you just, pop off a video anytime you want. Uh, most of the time you'd get them out at holidays or other events. And because of that, the events are longer, but you still would like to, what I'd still like to do is be able to take those events and make them their own video clip. And then later I might even want to take those individual clips and try to consolidate it down. So instead of a six minute or eight minute session of us dying Easter eggs, you've got 90 seconds of of the funnest parts and you just kind of blend them together and i might try that later and i think that i would have to do a little differently but to do this to break down the video into individual events based on time is pretty easy to do with quicktime now quicktime is a free program available for the mac and i think it's also still available for windows i don't know if the windows version will do what i'm doing here i think it will Anybody that has Windows out there and tries it, let me know. I don't have a Windows computer anymore. So I thought I would just show you how I do it. It's pretty quick. I can take a two hour tape once I've digitized it and break it up into its 10 to 15 little video segments in you know, 10, 15 minutes tops, probably even less than that. Let me just show you how I do it. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Here's my uh, video that I just digitized and I'm just going to double click on it in my computer. If I double click a .mov file, it opens in QuickTime. Uh, sometimes the extension might make it try to open in the TV app. And if it does that, then you just need to drag it onto QuickTime or open it from QuickTime. Anyway, here's the first video. And as you, if I scrub through, you can see this looks like it's uh, first date right there was, uh, I think, March 31st, Easter. And looks like we go through quite a few different events. And I can see that I've got... A lot of events here <laughs> so now the key is to break this up so we're gonna go to the first event and if I drag this you'll see this is us dying Easter eggs this is my kids and it looks like one of the cousins are there and my wife's mother and there is a different event different day and so we're gonna go here now I can use the arrow key to kind of move through this and, and try to get the exact point And there we go. So a couple of keystrokes that are really useful. A command Y will, as you can see on their edit menu, that splits the clip. And shift command S creates a duplicate. And we're gonna use those two keystrokes a lot. Unfortunately, there's not a save as. And the other unfortunate part is if I split the clip with command Y and I click on this little section and I copy it, it doesn't let me make a new empty clip. I can do a new movie recording, new audio recording, but I can't just create a new empty clip. So what we're going to do is we're going to just duplicate the whole thing. Command shift S. And you'll notice at this point that neither of these have the title of my original movie. So I'm no longer working on that original movie file. I can't mess it up. I can't really, uh, lose it or anything you'll notice that they're the same i have the same segments here as i do here so it's pretty much a simple matter we're going to go to this one we're going to delete everything behind it and now we have a clip which isolates that one event we're going to just close the window and we're going to find the place we wanted to save it i'm going to give it a date and i always use the four digit date for the year just so that 1991 ends up before 2005. And then we're going to go Easter. Oh, let's put the month in there, which was 03. And this wasn't Easter itself, so this is probably about the 26th, 28th, we'll put it. 
Easter egg die. Uh, any kind of a description that you want to use, obviously the key is all the videos will be in sequence as you look at them, and that's the important part. Hit save. And now we've got this clip all by itself. We're going to go back to this one, and we're just going to hit the delete key, and we're going to remove it. And now we're going to just, we can either go back and hit done, or we can just grab our scrubber, find where that one ends, and it ends right about there. And you can actually hit play here. I'll just use the arrow key to try to find the end. This is the time consuming part because sometimes the scrubber is not quite as delicate as you want. And I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to break it right there. So again, we're going to hit command Y and we're going to hit command shift S to duplicate. We're going to go and delete the back of this one. We're going to hit W to close the window. And here we're going to put, I'm going to go ahead and just copy that date, but then I'll change it. This is the, was the, if you notice at the beginning of that clip, it said the 31st. And of course, this is actually Easter itself, not dying. And we hit save. Once we save it, we go back to this one. We click and we remove that. Now they say you can hit done if you want, and you can go back and find the next segment you want to change, which is right. Let's look at the date first on this segment. Looks like we need to get rid of a couple of frames here. So let's go ahead and play. And let's say we want that where it starts. We're going to hit Command Y here. And now this first part is just that few seconds of video. Now we can drag the scrubber. It's usually easier. I usually just stay in this uh, screen here. I don't, I don't hit the Done button. And again, if you don't want the gray to show, you can use the arrow key to move through it. It's a little slow, unfortunately. You know, let's go here. One thing I did find out, if you make this window bigger, the scrubber at the bottom actually increases in size as well, and it becomes a little bit easier to find your beginnings and end. And that looks like about where we want to end the video right there. Looks like we're fading to black. Command Y, we're going to Command Shift S to duplicate, click the back half of it, delete it, hit Command W to close the window, and I don't, I forgot the date on this one, uh, we can go back over here if we want and look at the date, whoops, April 18th, so 1991, 04, 18, and this was Brenna's cat, which was named Lucky. Nope, this wasn't Lucky. This was Brenna's cat, which was named Butterfly, which ended up not being so lucky. Unfortunately, neither was Lucky that lucky. And hit save. Back to this one. Click and delete it. And the process is pretty simple. We're just going to repeat that process. And when we're done, if we go over here, we'll end up with a series of clips that are all easily uh, identified. One thing you might consider is that some people prefer to put a dash so that the date is a little clearer. And I think actually that's what I do in my videos. As I said, back when I started doing these, I didn't uh, use the, the 19 and the 20 in front. And that actually makes it a little easier to see the dates. But the, the challenge with that is you have to make sure you do that with all of your dates. Uh, from the beginning to the end. Obviously, you can go back and fix them if you have time, but it's easier to do it from the beginning. Okay, so now you can see that I'm about done with this particular video. My original that I've got done, I'm actually down to my last segment. This is the last event that's on it. thought I would mention a couple of things. One thing that you can do uh, pretty easily is edit the segments. This is something I did here. So I got to this point in the video and there was a bunch of pretty much nothing. And so I went ahead and split the clip and then I deleted about 30 seconds of video from this point to this point. And that's pretty handy to do. So we're ready to save that. The other thing I would thought I'd mention, I don't have a date on this one. Uh, the camera didn't record a date or for some reason it's not there. And what I usually do there is look at the last date that was taken 
which if you can see over here is the 6th of June. So when I save this, I'm just going to take a wild guesstimate and I'm going to just call this 1991-06 and I'll just say, you know, 10. And then this is Derek, Big T, Bailey, basketball camp. And so I know it's going to be in the right sequence. Uh, obviously, I did look to see if there was a date on the next part, and there isn't either, so I don't know. So I didn't save that. The other thing that I thought it was important, and I don't have a way to demonstrate that here, but you can, uh, actually, I can do that. Let's go to this one. Let me just show you. Uh, there might be times where you've got part of a video on the end of it, one clip or one part of a clip on the end of one videotape, and the same event is on the beginning of the next videotape. So what you can do, we're going to split this clip right here just for demonstration purposes. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit and duplicate it. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete the back half of it here. So what you can do here is I can move my scrubber all the way to the end. I can go here. Now, let's say this was my next videotape that I just loaded up. I can select the piece that I want. And this time I can hit copy. And I can go up here and I can hit paste. And it will paste that clip. So you can assemble multiple clips into a single clip using copy paste. And if you get the scrubber wrong, you can actually just move the segments around to make sure they're in the right order. So that can be really useful sometimes. I found myself eliminating a lot of video because uh, one time I set the camera down and it was obviously still recording and I had three minutes of nothing. So I went ahead and got rid of that. I didn't really try to edit out stuff that I didn't think was important. Uh, that's something I might try to do later. And I do think you could do that with QuickTime. You can just go through and find the segments you want to keep and delete the others because I can literally go in here and I can split this clip as many times as I want. So I could go here, I could split it. I could go here, I could split it. And then I could delete any little piece I want. The one thing I will warn you is the size of this isn't relative to the actual size uh, length of the clip. You'll notice it doesn't matter. If, if I go like just, let me just play like three seconds here. Let's just hit play about three seconds. Now, if I hit Y, Command Y to split it, you'll notice this little tiny piece is going to be as big as the rest. It's a little bit smaller, but it, the size of these doesn't really give you an idea of how big they are. But you could easily delete little pieces of the clip to clean it up if you want to while you're going. It wouldn't be that hard. A couple of other little things. Command Z does actually work to undo a split. In this case, I didn't really want to split that. And last of all, when you're down to the last clip, Let's go ahead and get, let's go ahead and edit the beginning of this and try to get it more where, where we want it. This is my daughter playing t-ball and we'll hit command Y and get rid of that beginning. And when we get down to the last one, we no longer have to, and there we go. You can see the rest of the video. This is where we quit using it. There's several minutes of blank. When we get down to the last one, you can just simply save it. Just hit, and that's your last clip. You don't have to do the copy, your uh, duplicate, etc. And I didn't see a date on this one either, 1991. And we're going to say it was 06, and we'll say it was 24, 23. Brenna T ball. So QuickTime does have one other feature which I thought I would mention. Uh, it's called the trim feature here. I've got my last clip open again. And one reason it doesn't work real well in this process, if I go ahead and do uh, edit trim, you'll notice that the entire video clip, my entire two hours of video is still there. And the only way I can get around that if I want to use the trim is to save it and then reopen it. What I need to do is get rid of this end. If I wanted to do that with the trim capability, what I would actually have to do is close the video and save it somewhere. We're gonna call this throwaway so I know that it's a video I don't need to keep. And then we have to reopen it. And there it is. And now we've eliminated all of the other references in the video to the, the two hours. And if I hit Command T, I can use the trim function. The trim function is really useful if you're trying to really narrow down the exact frame that you want to uh, 
uh, trim a video to. And if you've got a video you've already saved, this is a pretty nice way to trim it. Uh, in my case, I just tried, you'll notice how that it's even expanding so I can get more control uh, here. And if you're gonna do this, you can, notice how it expands open and it gives me even more control so it's uh, much finer. So it can be quite handy and hit trim. And in this case, what we would do is we would close it and then we would locate, I would, what I would do is I would locate the file, which is this one. I would just click on it and then it, I would just overwrite it. So I didn't want to go without mentioning the trim feature completely, but because when you copy a small section of the video, you still have the entire video that it's referencing it's really not a very useful tool for this particular process. It is great if you're just trying to get rid of some beginning and end of an already saved uh, video clip. Well, quite simple, uh, not hard to do. Don't have to buy any software to do it. Works quite well. Now, when I try to break these four to five minute segments down into shorter ones, I think I'm gonna have to use different software, which lets me do some other things besides just chunk out parts. Now, technically you could do that as well. You could take your five minute video and you could just chunk out little parts and save it. And that actually would work quite well. Anyway, the next video I've got right now, I'm working on a video on how I digitize my eight millimeter movies, uh, eight millimeter movies, or uh, some people even have 16 millimeter movies, a little more challenging. Uh, there's kind of a good, better, best process. And I chose to do the best. And there probably is even a better than that. And that's to actually send them out to a place that has high end equipment, but the good or better are substantially not as good as the best. The downside is the device to do it. What I feel is the best is a little expensive. So it might be better to, you know, if you don't want to invest the money, you can maybe find a place that uses a similar device to digitize those, but the results are really good. Those eight millimeter movies look, look pretty cool. And so I'll get into that in the next video. If you want to check that out, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I've got several other videos in this digitizing memory series I'm in the process of doing, and they'll be coming out over the next four or five months. Hey, thanks for watching. See ya.